High in the heart of Europe, in a time of religious turmoil and political intrigue, Sigismund of Luxembourg rose to become one of the most consequential rulers of his age. Welcome to Cryptic Mystic Vault, where we unravel the secrets of ancient mysteries born into a dynasty steeped in power and ambition. Sigismund's path was not paved with gold, but forged in the fires of political maneuvering and military conquest. His early years were marked by both privilege and peril, the young prince navigating the treacherous currents of courtly life. Sigismund's journey to the throne of the Holy Roman Empire was anything but straightforward. It was a journey marked by both triumphs and setbacks, a testament to his ambition and resilience. From his early days as a young prince, Sigismund displayed a keen intellect and a thirst for power, qualities that would both serve and haunt him throughout his life. His rise to prominence began in earnest upon his marriage to Mary of Hungary, a union that would have profound implications for his future. The year 1410 saw Sigismund elected King of the Romans, a pivotal step towards the ultimate prize, the imperial crown. This victory, however, was but a prelude to a reign characterized by constant challenges. The empire Sigismund inherited was a fractured entity, riven by internal divisions and threatened by external forces. The weight of history rested heavily on his shoulders, demanding leadership and decisiveness in equal measure. Sigismund's reign coincided with a period of profound religious and political upheaval in Europe. The Western Schism, a deep fissure within the Catholic Church, had left Christendom with not one but two rival popes, each claiming legitimacy and vying for power. This schism, a gaping wound on the body of Christendom, threatened to unravel the very fabric of medieval society. It was against this backdrop of crisis and uncertainty that Sigismund would come to play his most defining role, a role that would forever etch his name into the annals of history. The Council of Constance, convened in 1414, stands as a pivotal moment in the history of the Catholic Church. It was a gathering of unprecedented scale and significance, a grand assembly of bishops, theologians, and secular rulers from across Christendom. Their mission to heal the deep wound of the Western Schism that had divided the Church for nearly four decades. The Schism had cast a long shadow over Europe, undermining the Church's authority and fueling political instability. The spectacle of two rival popes, each claiming to be the true vicar of Christ, had plunged the faithful into confusion and doubt. The Council of Constance represented a beacon of hope, a chance to restore unity and reaffirm the Church's central role in medieval life. The Council's deliberations were far from harmonious. Deep divisions existed between the various factions, each with their own agendas and loyalties. There were those who supported the claims of Pope Gregory XII, who ruled from Rome. Others remained steadfast in their allegiance to Pope Benedict XIII, based in Avignon. And then there were those who believed that the only solution lay in electing an entirely new Pope, one who could unite the Church under a single, undisputed leader. The Council of Constance was not just a religious assembly, it was also a political hotbed. Kings and princes saw it as an opportunity to advance their own interests, to exert their influence over the Church and shape the destiny of Europe. Intrigue and power plays were common, with alliances shifting like the sands of a desert. Sigismund, as Holy Roman Emperor, found himself at the heart of this maelstrom, his every move scrutinized by friend and foe alike. Sigismund, a man of deep religious conviction, recognized the gravity of the situation. He understood that a divided church weakened Christendom and threatened to unravel the very fabric of European society. The Council of Constance, he believed, represented the best hope for resolving the schism and restoring unity to the church. But convening such a council was a gamble, a high-stakes endeavor fraught with risk. Sigismund's motives, however, were not solely driven by piety. As Holy Roman Emperor, he saw the resolution of the schism as crucial to consolidating his own power and authority. A united church would lend legitimacy to his rule and strengthen his hand in dealing with rival monarchs. Thus, Sigismund's support for the Council of Constance was motivated by a complex interplay of religious fervor and political pragmatism. 
Navigating the treacherous waters of the council required all of Sigismund's political acumen. He had to tread carefully, balancing the interests of competing factions while advancing his own agenda. He used a combination of diplomacy, persuasion and at times brute force to keep the council on track and prevent it from collapsing under the weight of its own divisions. Sigismund's role went beyond that of a mere observer. He actively participated in the council's debates, using his influence to sway opinions and build consensus. He understood that the success of the council hinged on finding a solution acceptable to all parties, a Herculean task given the deep-seated divisions that existed. His efforts, however, would be tested to their limits by the emergence of a new threat to the church's authority, the heresy of Jan Hus. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more mind-blowing discoveries and thrilling adventures into the past.